for joining me. Our next hour is going to be Learning Space with Nicole and Georgia. And Nicole, I thought you were going to be in our house, and I had a surprise to give you. Oh, which I'm I sorry. I, 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 I didn't said, like, give this to you here because we're not here. Oh. And Joe's actually, I think, going to drive this over to you. Um, so if you can unlock your front door or have Tim do it, he's going to bring it to you. Wait, like now? Because Tim's not here. Well, can you stand up and go unlock your door, and then I'll explain oh, you what this is. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What is it? Okay, so so I'll, I'll hold up. Uh, Joe, can you go put this one on camera? Chuck the Squirrel is wearing mine right now. Um, it is a surly Amy pendant <laughs> that has a little tiny vial on it that has... A bit of Mars in the vial. It's a piece of Mars meteorite, um, and this comes from Richard Drum, the astronomy bomb, and uh, our current green room denizen who's helping get all of the guests online and online safely. So did you catch that, Nicole? You have a surly Amy. Joe, come get the surly Amy. Um, it's very, I the very end. Can you show it on camera before you leave? Cool. So, so this is coming to you via Joe, who uh, is bringing you what Richard Drum mailed me. It's a little bit of Mars just for you to wear around your neck. Oh, thank you, Richard. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, and, and Chuck has the matching one on him. Um, and so I'm going to leave you guys in the fair position of being at $5,274 in donations. And your goal is to get this up to $6,000 by the end of the hour. Okay. And so far, we've been able to accomplish this. So you have one goal. <laughs> you have one job, Tyler. <laughs> well, you have a different job. Your job is to science people. Um, so I'm going to go make coffee from this guy, who you can't see that online. Uh, coffee beans for this event have been donated by It's My Show, facebook.com slash It's My Show, a live, um, pot, a live and podcasted rock shows. He's a musician and a coffee bean roaster who makes coffee that is stronger than Turkish coffee, which will mean something to some of you. And I haven't had any yet, so the rest of the sh the hang out might be a little bit more wired. Um, <laughs> so, so thank you for, for joining me, Phil. Thank you for joining Sarah. Um, I'm going to hang out with you guys a few minutes and then have Chris switch this over to a, a holding screen while I get some lunch. Um, yes. so, so learning space, you guys have been doing this for how long now? Um, good question. Two years? 2013 was the first episode? I can't add. <laughs> I know. I can't think back. It sounds right. A few years. How about that? A few or 2014. Years. So 90-something. So we're getting up there. And yes, we started with the official show launch, which actually involved a catapult, and I was shooting things at the screen... <laughs> I don't remember why. I think it was because we wanted to show off some cool science demos and, and officially launch the show by literally launching Marvel's webcam, which caused Pamela, who was in a completely different room, to duck and laugh. <laughs> it was pretty fantastic. So. What can I say? I have good duck reflexes. <laughs> it's important. Smart. It's, good. it's a good, good thing. Idea. Yeah. Yep, I remember that episode. I wasn't there for some reason, but I remember watching it, and that was very amusing. I remember that scene. Um, and I think I, think I also put that in our... It, it's go part ahead. of the video that we have for the Patreon campaign, actually. So if you go to Learning Space yeah. uh, on YouTube, you can actually see that happening in the Learning Space video, which uh, we'll probably play at the, the end of this as we transition back on set. What has your, been your favorite moment so far? And then I'm going to let you get a, get to recording your next episode, which you're recording live. <laughs> wow. Mm. Uh, mm. Best moment so far. I'm trying to think. Georgia, do you have one? I'm thinking. Well, okay. Okay. 
Um, one comes to mind is eating cupcakes with Jess Krim. So we had uh, one of our, our uh, one of our educators from from SIUE on. Uh, and she brought us cupcakes. But it wasn't just cupcakes for the sake of cupcakes. There were cupcakes that were specially, uh, she had layered the cake, different colored cake, and then put frosting over it and put a like um, opaque wrapper around it so that you could uh, do core samples and show what it's like doing core samples to see what different layers of a, a ge geological surface looked like. That one had to be one of my favorite because we ended up eating cupcakes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was delicious. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, it's real. It's hard to pick. Um, I love the ones that are actual hands-on activities and that are very easy for teachers to use. Um, I'm thinking right now of the episode where I don't know if you were here, Nicole, but we did everything. It was around. It was paper plate astronomy, and it was just. Oh, I missed that one. <laughs> maybe that's why I remember a little more. I don't know, because maybe I had to do more for that one. Um, and paper plate astronomy, I just I remember that because it's just it's amazing. A paper plate, how simple. And yet, um, all these wonderful activities that are simple, easy, um, fun to do, and teach a lot of good astronomy. It's just amazing where you don't have to have anything um, really complex. You don't have to have expensive equipment, which for teachers, is really a big thing. So you can use ordinary household items, and those are the kind of activities I love. And we've actually had a lot of guests on that have done that kind of thing. Just yeah. ordinary, ordinary stuff you have around the house, and here's all the cool astronomy you can do with it. That actually triggered another memory for me, and this was an episode you weren't on because it was a stupid hour in the morning, hour time. Um, but we had a guest, Arvind Gupta, uh, he was uh, calling us from India, so we were at a, a normal time for, for them. Yeah. Um, his, um, he had, like, he has hundreds and hundreds of these science toys for kids that he makes out of, like, literally scraps of everything from everywhere. Um, there was, like, a little way you could, you could draw animals using thread so that a blind, a blind child could actually right. uh, draw things. He some kid, like, That's all my favorite. I was about to point that one out. Yeah, yeah, that one was, he was just so full of life and energy, and oh my god, I want to bottle that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I know you guys are going to record your next episode live as part of this Hangout-a-thon, and I'm going to use this opportunity to eat lunch. Yes. <laughs> so, I love you dearly, but I get to see you every day, <laughs> if I want Yo, we're here to we're here to give you a break. It's all good. Okay, so have a, you you have one job to do an awesome show, which I'm not worried about, and one goal, just one goal. You want to hit six thousand uh, dollars. We're at five thousand three hundred twenty-two dollars and forty-two cents. Forty-two being an awesome number. I like the forty-two cents. Um, and. I will come back at the end of the show and we will probably uh, promo the Patreon campaign which is keeping your show going. Uh, it's all about all about donations and volunteers. So thank you guys for being awesome. Chris Miller, if you want to go ahead and mute my video, we can get lunch. Hi Chris! <laughs> hey. Hello Chris! There they go. Okay. All right, thank you everyone uh, for joining us. Uh, so uh, this week we want to talk a little bit about learning space in general since we know a lot of you guys uh, may not be regular regular uh, viewers of the show. Uh, in fact, we were just in the green room getting ready and a lot of our regular viewers of the show are all in the green room hanging out right now. So yeah. thank you guys. <laughs> you rock. What a coincidence, but yeah, thanks you guys. <laughs> <laughs> what a coincidence. It was nice um, to chat yeah, with them, yes. So, uh, yeah, actually, Pamela kind of started off with what I was going to say, is talk some about uh, some of our favorite moments from Learning Space. Um, uh, that triggered yet another <laughs> memory for me. Um, we don't get to do live on-site events all that often. It's very rare, and it doesn't always work that well, because you really want a strong internet connection. Um, but uh, one of the things, um, we have, uh, we've had two week-long workshops um, for teachers in our area in southern Illinois, 
um, for uh, them to do CosmoQuest education programs and uh, professional development. And so uh, on a Wednesday, we had a learning regular learning space time. I actually did a short broadcast from one of our workshops. Uh, and so I had Ellen Riley and Kathy Costello who helped develop some of these materials as well as the teachers at the Investigate Workshop, so this is the Vesta Asteroid Lesson Plan Unit, um, and they were in the middle of building spacecraft that were going to land on an asteroid <laughs> and take a sample and like take off again, and they were at the landing part, and they actually had like a record player uh, that they had to land on because it was constantly spinning the way an asteroid might be spinning. Um, so we got to, to spy in on them a little bit. We got to talk to Ella a little bit about the developments and about the workshop, but then we actually got to spy in on the teachers as they were doing their activity and completely flipping out because they were so excited and, and actually landing things and landers were breaking. I think I got to keep, I got to keep, um, one of the groups had one of the best ones and they were so proud of it. And they were like, well, we don't know who, to, which one of us to take it home, so here, you guys can have it. So it's, it's still in my office. <laughs> what kinds of things did they have to build the landers out of? Because I didn't get to go to that one. Uh, straws and little Dixie cups and rubber bands and paper. I mean, really, like you said, really basic materials that are available to educators. Um, stuff. I yeah, know. so they, they had to build a blender out of all that stuff they had lying around. Very so. cool. Did they have some limits, like they could only use so much of this or so many of those things, or did it have to be a certain I don't remember if there was a limit. Or because okay. I was setting up the hangout, I wasn't really paying attention to that part. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I know that's one of our, um, we put some engineering design kinds of activities um, because, well, they're very cool, but also um, it's an emphasis in the new science standards. So in our educational lessons, um, we like to put a little of the engineering design in there. And um, so often there's not only do you have some parameters, you have to um, either like, you know, land on the, turning turntable or whatever it is to accomplish the task, but you only have a limited amount of materials or a limited amount of money or a limited amount of time or something. So just like in the real world, um, you know, you don't have unlimited resources, so that's often part of the activity. And I can't remember, honestly, if what kinds of limits they had, but and it might have been they only had a little bit of certain materials to use. Yeah, it might have been a shortened version because it was the workshop and we didn't yeah. have those restrictions. But if you do it in a classroom, it's really helpful. I've done that with um, summer camp last semester. We had uh, students had to basically build a Faraday cage. We didn't tell them it was a Faraday cage. <laughs> and they had, uh, yeah, a limit on how much stuff they could, you know, tokens they could give in to get their stuff. Yep. Yeah. I know. Make it real world. Make it real world. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, Sometimes the real world's a pain in the butt. So we, uh, so we do our episodes every uh, let's see, first and third Wednesday of the month. Uh, and I'm not gonna time zone math in my head because I'm terrible at it, but it's usually at one o'clock central. Uh, you guys, uh, I'm watching the comments on the Hangout page, so if you guys are commenting there, uh, I can keep track there since I don't think the Q&A app is up. Um, so you guys can can yell at me and tell me what time that is. <laughs> Universal time. It's far more useful to most people around the globe. Um, but we like to, um, you know, talk, we talk to people and their different uh, educational programs um, and resources um, all around the world. Uh, and we talk to, um, and then, you know, sometimes we'll just do episodes where we share some of our favorite resources, which is what we're going to do a little bit today, later on. Um, we have one episode that is, I think, really useful if you, uh, you know, want to look at what mobile apps are useful for astronomy and astronomy education. Um, I, I, like, I don't remember episode numbers, but you can go to the website. <laughs> here in my signature, um, and look up the mobile apps episode where we actually asked you guys to recommend some, and um, we ended up with a blog post full of really good resources for, you know, being out under the night sky, or for teaching astronomy, or, you know, all of those different things. So we have resources, we have uh, demos, and and we, we love talking to people on the stuff that they're, hearing about the stuff they're doing. Uh, really, a really fun episode it was one where the tech wasn't great, but it ended up being awesome anyway. Uh, it was the it was the uh, gas 
astronomy episode we did not too long ago, uh, where we had a chef and an astronomer both talking about some of the outreach programs that they do um, involving food. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Ooh. Yeah, there's so many good ones. <laughs> We've also talked to, um, we have a really great local astronomy club, amateur astronomy club um, near us, the Riverbend Astronomy Club, and um, this was probably I think, at least a year ago. They were one of our earlier guests, I think, but we had a couple of members on from the astronomy club talking about what outreach has meant to them, and um, that was a really wonderful episode because you just see how powerful um, sharing astronomy with other people is. Um, not only for the people you're sharing it with, but it means a whole lot to the amateur astronomers. It means so much to share um, what they love with other people and help them learn and just help them appreciate and enjoy the night sky. And um, and they're, they're very active in our community here um, in southwest Illinois. Um, and so just outreach is a big part of, of what we talk about here, but also education and sometimes research. We've had some researchers on and we've had some episodes talking a little more researchy about science education, how people learn, um, how they don't learn, <laughs> how, oh my gosh, how yeah. misperceptions happen, um, deficit model I know is one I think I know I wasn't in on, but it sounds like that was a really good one too. That was, an April, that was, that was our April Fool's episode last year, although it was on April 2nd. Um, yeah, Emily Fink and Liz Neely came on to talk about, uh, two great science communicators, to talk about um, what models of science communication that we all use that don't work, which is basically give people data and information and they will learn, and well, that's, that's not really how our brains work. No, just tell them stuff. It's good. <laughs> no, it doesn't work too well. Yeah, and um, I know, and so it's, we, um, we have a, just a wide range of astronomy stuff, good stuff here, so. Um, we'll keep it coming. <laughs> so I'm checking in on the Hangout-a-thon donate o meter which I've just decided to call it, uh, and we are still at $5,342.42. So what we are here for is we are trying to help raise money to keep CosmoQuest going, creating all great uh, science and science education uh, tools, so we are mapping, let's see, Mercury, Moon, Vesta, and Mars is coming up on its way uh, to be mapped as well. Um, so this is keeping this project running. This is keeping the project going. We have great volunteers. We have people who have donated all kinds of cool stuff. And we are trying to get to 6,000 by the end of this hour. So we have 38 minutes left to do that. So if you haven't shared this link with your friend, share this link. Share the Hangout out a thon link. See if people can give a couple bucks, whatever. Uh, whatever you can give is actually really helpful. Um, oh, yeah. That's what we want. Our goal is to get to 6,000, so keep sharing. Um, and uh, I thought about uh, what I could give away. I don't have really cool giveaways like Phil. I know he just gave away like a meteorite. He's oh, Phil and he has cool stuff like that. Um, a meteorite around? Come on. Well, I do right. carry money, you know, but they're mine. They're for gifts to me for other people. I don't have one that I bought. <laughs> um, but I did want to offer something for you guys. Um, and I left it at work because I'm a jerk. Um, but I've got... Um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be sh showing, some showing some activities from a kit uh, that came to us from the Night Sky Network. I'll tell you a little bit about that. We've got a whole episode on them, but I'll give you a recap. The Night Sky Network um, sent me a couple of pins so that I could give out to the other members of my club who helped me do outreach. Well, technically, I'm not a club. I just kind of <laughs> run the door parties at the, on campus. But there have been some really cold nights, and I've been out there all by myself uh, and because it's cold or it's finals week or some, some reason that I, you know, people aren't coming out there. And you guys have entertained me uh, on Twitter on, on Facebook, on Vine. Uh, sometimes I'll Vine um, live views of Jupiter through my telescope because no one else is there. <laughs> anyway, I think you guys and your support have been really helpful. So I want to send you guys a Night Sky Network pin from the SIUE club to you for, for, for helping me out. And I don't have that one with me. I have it at work. But I've also got an Astronomical Society of the Pacific pin since they help run the Night Sky Network. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see yeah. it? Yeah. Excellent. So I want to send those two pins to, hmm, let's see. 
Uh, why don't we send it? Or, or okay, so this will be a thank you gift from me, um, for uh, from me and Georgia. So we'll 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 write you guys a nice thank you note and send you the pins mm -hmm. for whoever donates the most amount of money from in, in this segment over. What do you think would be a good set it place to set it at? Over fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, me. so the highest donator, highest donator, I'm assuming we're tracking this <laughs> the way we have in the last few years, highest donator over $50 um, in this segment, this segment, I'm writing this down because I'll forget it, <laughs> the highest donator over 50, over $50 in this segment um, will get uh, the two pins and a thank you note from, from me and Georgia, from Learning Space, um, for helping out with Cosmo Quest. And I still feel like we should do something if we hit 6,000, right? Yeah. I think we should do something. And since we were, I don't, I don't know, what do you think we should do? <laughs> you dye your hair, Georgia? Well, let's think about that. <laughs> The only one who has it. Okay. Well, I offered this last year for some ridiculous amount, and we never got to it. And I was just discussing this also in the green room. So let's say we have to hit six thousand dollars by the end of this segment. So thirty-five minutes from now, I will get a astronomy tattoo. <laughs> of I'm trying to think. Um, hmm. I will get an astronomy tattoo because I really want to get one anyway. But, um, let's see. What's your favorite thing? Well, I can't choose, and that's why I need you guys to help me out. Nebula. Uh, oh, that's really hard to draw. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll do the astronomy tattoo, um, which I kind of owe myself anyway, because I said I'd get one when I finished my dissertation, and that ne never happened. Um, so I'll get an astronomy tattoo, and uh, the person, oh, maybe this is a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> don't give away too much. Don't give away too much power now. Okay. Okay. Fine. We'll. About, <laughs> I don't you guys are watching this, um, so we'll let uh, our uh, regular learning space hangout viewers vote on uh, the the design. How does that sound? <laughs> I think we can sort of trust them. All right. No, I love these guys. Okay. So, so highest donator over 50 this segment gets the two pins of the thank you note from me and Georgia. And if we hit 6,000 in this segment, which is the goal that Pamela gave us, uh, we'll let the Learning Space viewers uh, vote on an astronomy tattoo. We'll even do it live. It'll be great. It'll be fun. Not the tattoo, but the voting. <laughs> Tattoos take a while. <laughs> All right. So that's, that's your goal, people. This is what you want. You want to be able to vote on my next astronomy tattoo. And I say next because I already have one. Um, so you can vote on my next astronomy tattoo if we reach 6,000 in this segment. So with that in mind, George, all you got to do is sign a thank you note. Onward. Yeah, I know. Well, you make it so easy for me. All right. Thank you. You're getting off easy. <laughs> You're getting off easy. I get a temporary uh, tattoo. What's that? Oh, I said I get a temporary tattoo. <gasps> I have temporary. Okay, you're totally doing the temporary tattoo too. Okay, I have like a NASA one. And you can Georgia draw my marker if you want. How about that? No, no, no. I actually have like space temporary tattoos. We'll totally get you one. All right. <laughs> so I'm I'm already getting suggestions. Uh, Hugo says Alma on my wrist. Um, I'm kind of a wuss. <laughs> That's kind of a painful spot. Is uh, and, and Richard's is the VLA and deformation, and I've actually thought of getting the VLA. That would be a, the very large array in Mexico, radio telescopes. Yeah, uh, yeah. All right, so let's move on to the more educational part of this program. Instead of me talking about uh, what tattoos you're going to make me get, uh, that's a donation, so sweet. All right, so um, like you said, like you were saying, some of the things that we do are uh, demo related, and it's actually not that hard to get your own demo kits um, for free. We have one of our earlier episodes. Actually, how early is it? Night Sky, episode 32. Uh, we talked with Vivian White and David Prosper at the Night Sky Network. This was yeah. back in October of 2013. Um, and it's a program that's run by uh, NASA JPL and the uh, Astronomical Society of the Pacific. Um, and they um, 
support astronomy clubs that do outreach. And we first heard of them through Jeff and Terry Menz, who run the Riverbend Astronomy Club here uh, in our area. Uh, and if you sign up with your group um, and how if you hold outreach events and log your outreach events through their website, they will start sending you free stuff. It's really kind of the best deal ever if you <laughs> like doing astronomy. And I'm sorry, I know we have a lot of uh, great people from around the world. This program is only available in the U.S. Um, but if you do outreach, they will send you more kits to do more outreach. It's really kind of a great deal. That's amazing. So do you have to be a question? Do you have to be an actual astronomy club? Can you be like a scout group or an organization, or do you know? Yeah. If just they're not astro clubs. Yeah, not, yeah, they don't discriminate what kind of you know group <laughs> you are. I mean, they let me. Any group. <laughs> well, I know, but you, yeah, connected to astronomy. Club. I signed up as a club, even though I mean, yeah, I put. I, oh, actually, you're you're on the list of organizers. You might you yeah. might be doing. This. Doing this when I move, <laughs> um, but the other people who've done it in the past and other people who've helped out have also been co-organizers on it. Yeah, it doesn't have to be an astronomy club. Uh, it could be you know any group that does astronomy outreach uh, and and wants better tools. Um, although you can go out and find make your own stuff, what's really nice is they package up these kits and they'll send you these kits mm -hmm. of and resources and really up to date stuff. Um, that'll help you um, do your outreach even better. Uh, and even train yourself and other members of your club if you don't know of a lot of astronomy. They've got these, um, they actually send you uh, resource manual CDs and there's a DVD. Where they, they actually do videos like here's how you do the activity. Um, so it's really, it's really helpful if you have a passion for it and don't know where to get started. Um, these kits are really helpful. So I had, we've gotten three of these kits so far. I'm so, I'm so excited. <laughs> Because they sent me the meteorite and meteor wrong one first, which was my favorite. Um, and I, cur I recently had all three in my car from a recent event. So I pulled one out of my car, um, which is the solar system and planets one. So I'm going to show you some of the stuff. Let me not knock everything over. Yes, yeah, see? Yeah, I was good. So every. Can you hear me, Georgia? Yep. Keep going. Okay, so every kit comes with some kind of banner, and so this is the banner. It's the sun, <laughs> and over here is Jupiter, <laughs> and Earth. Where's Earth? There's Earth for scale. Oh, little bitty Earth. Hello. <laughs> so you get Very nice banner. That's really a huge really tough, right? I mean, that's like a vinyl. I don't know what it's this made out of. This is vinyl it, with like yeah. metal ring. It's That's totally really cool. Great. So and it's two sided. So there's like the pretty side. And this side, you can use your active. I'm making a giant mess of this. There is a solar system, the orbits, um, so that you can do various activities on the banner. And so since oh, there's my oh, just in time. <laughs> <laughs> we have a visitor. Ooh, Thank you. Delivery. We have a delivery. This is this is from Amy Davis Roth, one of my favorite people in the world. This is the tiny tiny little piece of Morris Shirley. Richard, I love you. Thank you. That is so cool. So you went you went instead of Joe. Can you go lock the doors then? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I was going to have you hold this up. There we go. Oh, look at that. Thank you, Perfect. Jim. So, yeah, so you've got <laughs> this cool banner, and it shows you, uh, so you've got a uh, position of the Earth in its orbit in different months. It's probably really impossible to see. It's got uh, yeah. zodiac constellations on the outside, so and good. where do the rulers go? Ah! Hang on, I'm missing stuff. Oh, Oh, yeah, those on the back. Can you grab that? Sorry. <laughs> you found it. Um, so what you would do is you set up a table, set up a little folding table. In fact, I have our, our previously and previous end table. Um, set up a folding table and have this banner out on display, and what you can do is do various things with it. So this comes with these little plastic things that have a horizon. 
Um, so it's got a horizon. You can point the direction where the sun is at. And the way this works is you put this, again, I'm not sure how you guys can see this on the camera, but you put this on here. So if you're on Earth and you're facing away from the sun, it's nighttime for you. This shows you what's you know below the horizon, what's above the horizon in the sky for you, uh, where the planets are. Um, and then you can, it tells you where to point. I don't know if you guys can see that okay. It tells you where you, you know, where to point the, the sun in relation to that. So you've got these things. This is cool. This is a ruler in light minutes. Oh, nice. So on this it's scale, on that. Awesome. You know how many minutes it takes for light? It takes eight minutes to get from the sun to the earth. Sure. You've got a ruler in light minutes that you can use. Um, and then there's another one that shows uh, these show uh, clips of the orbit. So this is the orbit of Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. You put that up against the circles on this big thing. tells you how many months it takes to move, you know, how far the planets have moved in that given time frame. Um, and then there's a link that comes with the resources where you can uh, look up where the planets are. Let me see this little thing here. And you can, you've got these little Velcro, get these little Velcro stickies, and you can actually mark where the planets are right now. Uh, so that'll kind of direct you to where they are in the sky. And not only the planets, but it's got a whole bunch of spacecraft, too. Spacecraft. Yeah, so you can see where Voyager is, uh, where Stardust is, uh, well, Messenger's kind of near Mercury. Um, <laughs> the, oh, the New Horizons probes, so you can look at where all of those are and uh, put those on your map when you're ready to go out and do your outreach. Thank you. Yep. You're yeah. up. Cool. You can go put that somewhere. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so actually, um, you know, just finding out where the planet, you could make your own poster board of the solar system and do all the math to get the scales right. Uh, you could, um, you know, make all these little stickers yourself, but they send you this kit, and it's already all done, and it's this great, super, like, heavy-duty vinyl, like you said. Um, yeah. And all the background information is there, or at least a link, right, to where you can go to get it. So, um, and that's amazing stuff, because when you're doing outreach, people always want to know, they want to know, of course, what's up in the sky right now, so what's that thing, what's that bright thing over there, and then sometimes, you know, what's that moving thing, what, you know, is that a satellite, is it the space station, you know, what's, what's up there, and then if they're familiar with the spacecraft, um, that are out there, and that's something I always wanted to know. You know, you know, there's these things mm -hmm. out there, man-made things that are, you know, circling the globe, and you want to know, like, what's up there? Where is it? <laughs> and you know, and things that are beyond. You know, what's around Mercury right now? What spacecraft do we have around the Moon right now? You know, where are the ones that are going off? You know, towards Pluto and around asteroids. It's just there's so much actually that's out there that we've done that we've sent out as a planet, and that's pretty cool. And so people, you know, they like to know that kind of stuff. Absolutely. It's, yeah. And it's hard to keep track of. <laughs> so um, it's good to have the resources to be able to um, share that information with people. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a good way um, to get yourself ready if you're going to do an outdoor event is to really, um, you're going to get questions on everything, right? And so sometimes you just have to be like, I, I, don't, know. I don't know. You can even pull out your phone and, and check it out if you I know. The phone is good now. That is, it's such phone is good. And that's why we have a little phone. Yeah, it's such a good tool now. Yeah. But yeah, so it's the website. If, so just for the Night Sky Network, what's the main website for that? People just want to go check that out real quick. Uh, let's see. Uh, Night, Sky Network, Night Sky Network dot org uh, redirects to the main site. It's nightsky.jpl.nasa.gov. But oh. I just type in Night Sky Network dot org, and that takes you there as well. Yeah, cool. uh, so, of course, they're working with Astronomers Without Borders, who are also a big part of this hangout a -thon on the Global Astronomy Month. Um, so uh, check that out. And I really, really encourage everyone, if you do any kind of you know astronomy outreach, sign up with a profile. This will help you keep track of your events. It'll help you. You can uh, email your members of when something's going to happen. Um, and then, you know, if you log a certain amount of events, you get, you get cool stuff to do more outreach. It's, it's a really, really great program. 
Yeah, and uh, actually, you know, we want to, we're interested in who we're reaching with our outreach. So just on a big scale, you know, we're, we're tracking numbers, and that's part of what this program is. And they, they would like to know, you know, where are these outreach events occurring? Um, how many people are there? How many women are there? How many men are there? What are the ages? And we kind of, you know... Well, I was forgetting to actually track it, but so sometimes we have to take a good guess. But these kinds of things are really important because um, it gives us a sense of who we're reaching and, and who we're not, maybe. So because we don't get to everybody, certainly, and we get to some groups more than others. So this kind of data collection is really important um, as we as they plan new, you know, new kits and new things. You know, is there something we can do that's maybe a little bit uh, different that might, you know, interest, you know, more people to come and, and learn about astronomy. Mm -hmm. So you have, um, what else do you have back there? I see large styrofoam globes, the, styrofoam balls. the thing you have to have if you're going to do any astronomy. you got to have the styrofoam balls. Yeah, so we've got some styrofoam balls um, that are scale of the planet. So there's like these little half balls. These are like Uranus and Neptune. I think, and then there's these big ones that are Jupiter and Saturn, and Saturn's, I don't think this is the right one, but Saturn's got rings, so yeah, I haven't actually assembled the entire kit yet. <laughs> there is some assembly required for some of these, okay. I think. This okay. one gives you some clay and some dimensions where you can make scale models of, like, Ceres and Vesta and the other large asteroids. This one has you making um, the solar system, so i got to sit down one day and finish making my little solar system. Uh, that I've got here. Oh, so you've got these balls as the gas giants, and then you've got, there's <laughs> like this, th this is perfect, because it is so hard when you do a scale model solar system to get all the sizes right. So they've got the styrofoam balls, and then they've got pins that work out. They've selected these pins specifically because they match the sizes. So here's Earth. <laughs> oh. Like a little turquoise. All right, nice. And here's Mercury. It's like the head of this pin. And like, I, okay, the best one is Ceres. Oh my god, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> they send like several of these. I was just going to say, that could be a danger, right? I've lost yeah, three. Do you want, so like, it's this tiny little copper bead on my finger right there. That's Ceres. Wow. <laughs> you see it? Yeah. Got it. Yeah. It's either that or a little spider or something on your. Yeah. Nope. 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 <laughs> uh, but yeah, so they send you things that are just the right size um, for this scale model solar system. That's now, of awesome. course, so for something about this size, if you want to actually make a scale model solar system out of it um, and get the distances to scale as well, uh, you'd have to still have. Um, there we go. I'm trying not to lose these tiny peaks. Uh, you'd still have to have like a huge like outdoor area where you can set these things up. So this, um, I used to do an edible solar system demo where there was this pumpkin in the sun, and uh, Jupiter and Saturn were like apples and oranges. So probably even smaller than this demo. And we had this whole big outdoor track at the school where we used to set it up, and that was our. Um, and that was uh, our scale model solar system. So even with things this size, you're going to need a big outdoor area if you want to get the distances correct. But you don't always have to do that. There's another little thing. Uh, here we go. There's another little vinyl thing that came in this one. And you can kind of give people the idea without actually doing the whole big thing. So you've got this, you've got this thing. It's got, uh, it takes 11 Earths to span the diameter of Jupiter. So there's, there's your little one, yep. Earth, with the diameter of Jupiter. Yeah. And then it takes 10 Jupiters to span the diameter of the Sun. So, here's so the Sun. Got 10, yeah, 10 Jupiters there. Woo! 10 Jupiters span the diameter of the Sun. Of the sun. Uh, and, then, uh, and then, you need 108 suns. So now you got to use your imagination. 108 of these to be the distance between the sun and the earth. So this is giving you a scale model. Uh, this is a, probably about the right size for the, the, the styrofoam bits. Um, so this is, gives you an idea of what that scale model would be. And in fact, we've got a previous learning space quickie. Occasionally when we can't do a live episode, I've done a recording. Um, 
then they did a learning space cookie, and they get they they include these in the kit. Uh, you can use receipt tape or any other kind of long paper. You can use toilet paper. The receipt tape is pretty handy. Um, stretch it out to match your wingspan, and then you can use fractions. Um, to figure out where the planets are, you fold it in half, and then fold it in half again, and just use you know stickers or markings to get an idea of the distance scale of the planets. And this is great because it's super cheap and really makes an impact. Plus, you can have people guess. What I've done before is have mm-hmm. have kids guess uh, where the planets belong, and the guesses are always completely off because <laughs> you don't have really good. The ideas of distances in the solar system. No, well, you know, if you haven't really drawn it out before, I mean, you just think of these things, you know, this one's further away than that one, but you don't have an idea of how much further. And it really, even if when you try to do a real scale, you know, a scale model with the actual distances, it's amazing how far away and how big it has to be. Because you just you just don't imagine it. So yeah, that activity I've done too with the with the um, adding machine tape or whatever you want to call it, receipt tape. And yeah, it's really cool because you can do some nice predictions. Ah, and then you've like been listening. Yeah, and then it's it's amazing. Oh, that's nice with the stickers. Where is this from? Back when you were at UVA. Okay, I made this at UVA apparently. Because it has the actual planet stickers, which are way too big. It's all crowded down there in the lower half. Oh, so you've got the asteroid belt down there. Very nice. Okay. Right, I make little dots. Uh, yeah, and then we've got uh, Uranus is in the middle. Okay, I have to share this. Um, <laughs> is this, a, this is a bit short. Uh, they're supposed to be out to, to the length of your arms, which is about your height. But basically, when you have it at your height, uh, and you hold it at your head, Uranus... Is right where you think it would be. <laughs> How appropriate. <laughs> yeah, this is what I learned in the Astronomy Ambassadors Workshop. Is Uranus is right where you think it would be if you make this like. <sighs> it's good that the universe makes sense somehow. <laughs> yeah. or at least the solar system. I don't know. Solar system makes sense. You have a pocket solar system. So, um, checking in on the meter, and I'm very, very disappointed, you guys. Um, Oh, never mind. Somebody just wanted a big donation. <laughs> so we have 14 minutes left in our segment. We're now at $5,862.42. Like, it literally, somebody just jumped in with $500. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> somebody really wants to vote on my next tattoo. Well, I said what we're giving away. Um, so as a thank you from, from Georgia and I, we will say... Someone's going to get the pins. That's right, someone's going to get two pins. The highest donation, as long as it was over $50 for this segment, will get a Night Sky Network pin as a thank you from me for entertaining me on those nights when nobody shows up because it's too cold, um, and uh, one of the ASP pins as well, and a thank you note from us. And as long as we hit 6000 in this segment, so I can't do math. <laughs> we are one hundred and thirty-eight dollars away, guys. Hey, wow. away. Awesome. And we will have a vote on my next astronomy tattoo on an episode of Learning Space. Uh, so you guys will get to decide my next astronomy <laughs> tattoo. Oh, what fun! What fun! Because <laughs> <laughs> the tattoo is kind of a big deal. <laughs> Okay, Tim was going to offer something, but I told him to save it for another segment, because we're already doing my tattoo. Um, yeah, so you, yeah, so you guys are going to... Well, we'll save it for, for another one. Um, so thank you, guys. And, and a couple of the suggestions that have come in so far are, you know, you guys know me very well. Uh, Alma, you know, on my wrist, although I'm kind of a wuss. We'll see how the wrist thing goes. And then the VLA and deformation. So two radio astronomy. Um, we're, I'm going to write those down. Those are going to go on the voting. So we're going to have Alma and VLA in dconfig, because that's a big deal. All right. <laughs> so, um, what else you got back there? I don't know. Or is that, you got some straws, uh, balloons? Um, so there's there's some more stuff that goes along. There's, uh, there's They give you glue to put the things together. They give you all these sticks that you can put, you know, the styrofoam balls on to make your model. Um, yeah. they, got, um, I don't know what the chopsticks are for, <laughs> there's tiny pencils, there's sandpaper, um, so all stuff for, for creating creating your different um, model solar systems. There's handouts, the handouts are super great, so basically they give you these great handouts and you can make copies of these. They've got a scale solar system on paper, 
um, as well as uh, how you can actually make one. Oh, so here we go. If the sun is a meter, so it, you know, if you have a meter stick, if the sun is a meter in diameter, these are the sizes of your planets, and then it gives you distances in this scale. So if the sun is a meter, then you want your Mercury, which is a tiny little dot here, <laughs> to be oh, 40 tiny. away. So if you've got a lot of space, you can actually do this scale model solar system, although really you're not going to be you're not going to send somebody three kilometers away to Neptune, I don't think. That would be kind of mean to do to somebody. Um, and see, there's more handouts on spacecraft in the solar system. Um, <clears throat> and uh, this is a small version of that uh, big vinyl thing. <clears throat> and then they give you star maps. Um, they give you interesting star maps, because star maps, you know, pretty... Basic star map shows you where the constellations are in any given month. This one shows you where the ecliptic is. So it doesn't have where the planets are exactly because that changes from year to year. January, this is where the ecliptic is, and this is where it will be found, for example. Um, another kit that I got, <clears throat> which I guess we got like four kits. There's one small one um, that shows you uh, a night sky. It gives you a monthly sky map. Um, with the locations of the stars where we have, uh, where we know of exoplanets. And so you have these visible stars in the sky, it's like, look, I can't show you the exoplanet with my 8-inch telescope, but that's where we know of, you know, and it gives you the exoplanet information so you can figure that out. There's also solar viewers in here, so you can, you know, look at the sun. Not that I can do that because it is cloudy here. Um, lots of, you know, these are the Thousand Oaks uh, solar viewers that are really good for watching eclipses and all kinds of cool stuff safely. Do not look at the sun. Do not look at the sun. Do not look at the sun without proper safe things. Um, yeah, so that's the kind of stuff... Uh, and in fact, I was going to do a quickie recording um, for you guys to go up for next Wednesday, since it's like the fifth Wednesday, we don't have anything scheduled, of uh, one of the other kits. So I'll probably pull out the uh, Magnetic Sun kit and do a, an activity from that kit for you guys. I'll pre-record that and put that up on, on Wednesday as well. Um, so I like these because they're accessible, and you can get it by just doing outreach and logging your events, and they'll send you this cool stuff. How often do you get a new uh, kit? Nicole? Good question. I feel like I've gotten a new one every semester. Okay. So you Can know, I imagine they're creating new ones. Um, I think that they create new ones, but they'll catch you up on the old ones. Yeah. Yeah, because like I'm always catching up on uh, all. You know, Terry and Jeff, uh, the Riverbed Astronomy Club, have like. All of them. I think they're actually beta testers for some of the kids. Because oh, I think so, too. I was going to say, I think I remember Terry telling me that, that they, they've done so many, and they've, they've been such good, you know, <laughs> users of the kits that they, they got one sent, yeah, to actually test it out. Yeah, they get beta tested once. Yeah, yeah. they're awesome with the outreach. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, like, way behind. But what I'm going to do, since I'm leaving SIU, uh, I'm leaving SIUE soon, uh, these three kits are going to get finished up and cataloged, in, and uh, do I'm going to donate them to the STEM Resource Center. So if you happen to live in Southern Illinois, <laughs> these kits will be available to you to check out for free from the STEM Resource Center. So that's going to be my gift to you guys, the SIUE community, uh, and then I'm going to move to New Hampshire, and uh, in my new job, I'll probably start a new one. So they just start up again. I think I'm going to. They've already started a physics and astronomy club up there, so awesome. the the students have. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get them enrolled. <laughs> get them some stuff. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Yeah. So um, yeah, we love. Uh, if you have any ideas for cool astronomy demos, for interesting astronomy lessons, um, you know, let us know. Uh, so we are over at CosmoQuest.org. Um, in, under the educator zone, it's learning space. We've got all of our uh, past episodes. We've got a trailer. We've got a Patreon uh, video and, and link so that you can become a, a subscriber and a donator. Um, and we are currently uh, looking to fill a couple of episode spots in June. So, mm -hmm. although I think if this is going to be a recorded episode and put in the feed, we may skip skip the numbering around. But we are still looking for some people in June um, who have interesting mm -hmm. topics or ideas. So send us your ideas. It goes to learning space at cosmoquest.org. You can reach me, noisyastronomer, at gmail.com. Um, that's my email address that sticks with me. <laughs> Wherever you go. Yep. 
Uh, you can tweet us um, uh, as well. I don't think we have a... Uh, oh, great. Phil just retweeted my astronomy tattoo thing. Okay. <laughs> Well, we'd love to get, we've had a few, I think we've had a couple high school teachers. Um, I'm not even sure if we've had, we had a middle school teacher. We'd love to get some more classroom teachers on because um, this is a great resource for people not only trying to do outreach, but somebody who's a teacher trying to do any of these activities with their kids. Um, so if you are a teacher of any level, um, let us know because it would be great to have some teachers on just showing what you've done in your classroom, how things have worked for you, what you like, um, how your students react to it, and make some recommendations for the other people that are watching out there. That would be a really, not only really fun, but really useful thing for um, teachers watching out there because teachers like to try things that other people have tried and can say yes this has worked and that is very important because you don't always have time to try an activity out yourself before you go into the classroom um, it's always good advice and we try to do that and I remember just when I was back in the classroom I always wanted to do that but there's just not always time and I always relied on other teachers to say hey you know try this I tried it and it worked pretty well or I used this and you know it was okay but not this part you know don't do that do this instead and so it's having the recommendations of fellow teachers fellow professionals is really just critical because you don't always have time to see how things are going to work ahead of time and I love that you have that experience to bring to it um, as, a, 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 as a teacher. Because I've, I've done outreach with kids, but I can't handle, like, every day in a classroom like you did. Um, that's, like, super special, amazing powers of awesome. Uh, that, that yeah, it's, it's different, but there's a lot of overlap, of course. There's a lot of overlap between just going out and doing outreach with the general public and doing things in the classroom. Um, but they are different environments, so there's different things to think about and different plans you have to make and, and all that. But, but there's a lot of stuff that works well in both, and um, it's just good to hear about other people's experiences. So if you're a classroom teacher and you try some of these things in the classroom, and, or you just love astronomy and any kind of science, actually, it doesn't have to be astronomy, although we kind of always tend to go that way. Um, but any kind of science, cool science stuff you're doing in the classroom with your students, um, it would be great to have you on, and we'll talk about it, and you can share your experience with everybody else. Absolutely. Um, so I'm checking. My clock says we have three minutes left, and we're... Oh! We did it! Woo! No kidding! <laughs> I just hit refresh. We have $6,312.42. I am officially getting another... Ooh. And That's we will have awesome. a vote on an upcoming episode of Learning Space on what that tattoo should be. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Hey, <laughs> thank everybody. Aw, you guys are awesome. <laughs> thank you. Woo, all right. Um, <sighs> That's great. It looks a little shocked. <laughs> Pam, oh, there's Pamela. Hey, I, I decided to come in and congratulate y'all on your awesome job so far. I just uh, donated my skin to science. <laughs> that, that's okay. Look, Matt, Matt Wood said that uh, if we cross fifty-five thousand dollars and we surpass the potato salad, my, I just tell me that we're better than potato salad. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if, and Joe, Joe just shouted better from potato the better than potato salad from the corner. Um, yeah, Matt Wood will actually get the pillars of creation tattooed. So whatever they do to you, Nicole, probably won't hurt quite as much as that. Um, but yeah, we're we're sitting at six thousand three hundred and thirty-seven dollars, and we continue to have forty-two cents of awesome. <laughs> I hope someone's watching that and adjusting it every once in a while. Um, so actually, also, Pamela, there's another thing. Uh, whoever gave the most uh, in that segment, as long as it was $50, we're going to send them, um, George and I are going to send them a thank you note 
and a couple of pins um, because I have some Night Sky Network pins to give away and I don't have club members to give them to and since people are so helpful, I, we're going to give them oh, So email that to me and I will make that thing happen. I will. And you know what? Let me know who else donated in this segment. I feel like they get a vote in my tattoo. So. Okay. But, our, our regular learning space uh, crew will, will vote as well. Yeah. Yeah. They need a thank you. Yep. Yes. They get to vote on a big tattoo. <laughs> things you never thought you'd be doing. I also <laughs> last year. We didn't hit the mark, so I figured. Well, it was you and Tim were both offering up your fl the dragon eggs. I forgot to bring the dragon eggs from campus. Ooh. We couldn't probably run and get them. If if someone could run and get the dragon eggs, they're they're in my office. Okay. Do you, do you remember the details of that off the top of your head? Uh, no, but there's a plaque. Yeah. So. Doesn't it say what the? Oh no, wait. It has the details. It has the details somewhere. We'll find so, it. So so we had, and I'm adding this. I now have to have notes. So many people have done so many awesome things. I had to keep notes. Last year. We had a donation that I believe was around $1,500, and it started as whoever donates the most money during a certain segment, um, Tim Legauer, is that how yeah. you, um, her her wonderful significant other whose last he name I never... He was holding posters for me earlier, so he was... Yes. Um, he is an amazing prop designer, costumer, and he made these gorgeous dragon eggs that we will bring from campus and the the idea was to create a tradition where whoever donates the most money gets custody of the dragon eggs for a single year Aragorn style if they hatch you have a dragon um, <laughs> if they don't hatch they get passed on to the next year's hopefully it will be highest science producer after this year if we get our large NASA grant that we're applying for um, and it was just an excellent thing that I forgot to bring home on Friday. Um, okay, and for one more thing. Okay. So, so whoever donates the largest sum of money or the largest number of images marked um, dollar image one-to-one -one correlation like the day the Euro launched um, will get custody of the eggs for one year. Um, we're starting a tradition. <laughs> Very good. Um, okay. You guys did good. I have no complaints. Um, you had one job. You science people up. <laughs> you had one goal. You surpassed it. Um, okay. so good job. What's, <laughs> what's next for Learning Space? Uh, well, we've got uh, a couple of good episodes coming up. We will be taking a voyage with the Sloan Digital Sky Survey in our next episode on May 6th. Uh, this is a, a way that you can use the data from the Sloan Digital Sky Survey in your classroom um, for education. They've launched it or relaunched the site a little, a little while ago, and so we have uh, a couple people. We have Karen Masters and Kate Meredith on board to come on for that. And then the crazy uncles of CosmoQuest, Patrick oh. Brown and John Feldmeyer, are joining us to talk more Astronomy 101 topics, and partly because I'm teaching that next semester, and so I'm going to pick their brain for their favorite activities. Um, and then, uh, like I said, we've got a couple spots in June. If, uh, we are working on getting some guests, but you can also suggest topics and guests as well. And, and our crazy uncle Pat Durrell will be on the, the Hangout-a-thon tomorrow. I think it's 6 p.m. Check the schedule, cosmoquest.org slash hangoutathon. Um, and he's coming on with Annie, his awesome content creating sidekick, and we're going to talk about the new planetarium show that we're in the process of writing with author Christiana Ellis. Yay, Christiana! So, uh, yeah, and we have joining me now, um, because I can't see the screen from here, I have to look on this screen, uh, is Brian, I'm so sorry what I'm about to do your last name, you're free to mock me and then correct me. We have uh, Brian Ventrado, who does urban stargazing. Welcome, Brian. How are you doing today? Hello, Pamela. I'm doing very well. And how do you actually say your last name? Oh, it's Ventrudo. Ventrudo. I've tried. Yeah. Right. I'm Gugliucci, and I uh, you know. Oh, yeah, it. another yeah. Italian name. That's right. <laughs> Gugliucci. Yeah. <laughs> Gugliucci. <laughs> yes. All right. Have fun, you guys. Hey, I thanks. know. I had to go live. There's a rescue from Dragon Egg. 
Be well and be scientific. All right. I'm going to go grade for finals week. I'm going to go grade. I'm so sorry. <laughs>